morning guys Hi, gozaimasu. yesterday when i was out i picked up this ibanez wh10 it's listed as junk and with the reason being that the sound cuts out when it's at a certain angle i believe is what it said so we're going to take a look at it here just get an idea of what's going on let me get everything set up here. Hey guys. Too much stuff going around everywhere. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this one in the input. And in our output. So this over here, I, I noticed, a little loose. So we'll start by tightening that. So maybe Okay, there you go. Let's turn off channel two. I'm gonna move Pikachu out of the way here. There we go. Let's see here. Okay, so there's nine volts in. Cool. Okay, let's see here. I don't know how to use this pedal yet. Let's see, am I in the right output? I am. Make sure this is our channel one, which it is. So what's going on here? Is the amplitude down? Nope. Hmm. So the adapter is or the port for the AC adapter. Sorry, the DC feels a little loose, but that's the issue. What's going on here? There's just no output. Make sure this is okay. Looks fine. Hmm. Actually, I'm just gonna double check and make sure that, yeah, so that's fine. So there we go. So we're getting no signal. So let's try to figure out what's going on. Maybe there's a loose wire or something else. Yeah, yesterday was pretty crazy. I was just going around some shops, took the train around, let's say it was about 5.30 p.m. And it was super packed. Just hard to get a seat on the train, people commuting. So actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try the nine volt really fast. I'm just gonna check to see. This is an issue with the the jack here. So let's go ahead and try that first. So 
So let's see, this was the output. This is our input. Okay, interesting. So we're finally getting signal with the nine volt in. Let me double check and make sure. Let's try again with the Yeah, for some reason, let me check another port. And I have no reason to suspect, oh no, there we go. Interesting, so wait, was there some issue with this port? Um, not really, so that's odd. Not sure what's happening there, but okay. So that's fine, so let's go ahead and check out the effect then. Uh, maybe that's, there we go. See, for example, at this angle, suddenly. Suddenly we get no output right about right there. Or I guess we get output, it's just not the desired output. Okay, so I would assume that's probably an issue with the pot. So let's go ahead and see, actually, let me turn this off first. Let's go ahead and see the resistance value of that pot when it's angled. Oh, interesting. So it looks like I want to gain access to that, I need to desolder the jacks. Actually, wait. Uh, no. I think what I can do is probably take them off. From here first and then just pull it out. Getting some resistance. So let's see where that's coming from. There we go. Pretty cool. See if there's anything here. I wasn't sure which version this was at first. I know there's like three different versions, but I'm assuming it's the second version based on the bottom. And also I didn't see like made in Japan, like right right around here. Um, okay. So let's see, I'm not familiar with this type of potentiometer. I'm assuming so we have the three typical lugs. We also have three additional. So um, it's very hard to angle this so with this here. So I'm gonna remove that. This one though. Also, that should be removed. Here we go. That's much easier to work with. 
but still, uh, yeah, let's try to get this one off too, this potentiometer, if it's easy. I don't even see an easy way to pop that off. Oh, well, that was simple. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Um, different size. Maybe this one here. Hmm. Well, looks like my socket wrench. Too small. Listen, yeah, I don't think that's gonna work out well. I might have to take some needle nose pliers. Um, but I don't want to risk scratching stuff up, so I'm just gonna try. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so let's check the resistance values as soon as I can find my multimeter. Okay. And let's see here. Hundred thirty one. I think it was about right here where it wasn't working. So I'm assuming it's a two hundred fifty K pot. Let's also check this back one here. So it looks, for example, like here. You know, we're at our, actually, let me try this. Yeah, 107, let's move it. Yeah, something seems off. Like I can't imagine a 30 meg. Yeah, there's something there. So, um, let's see here. Let me make sure, can I take this off easily? I wanna make sure that, for example, I, I don't know if it's possible that something with the wiring could be causing an issue with the resistance. La resistance. So, actually, maybe it's easier to take this one off. Oh, yeah, okay. So let's double check now. Same thing. So again, here, looks like everything's okay with our readings. But here, it's not. Or it starts off fine, as you can see. So maybe it will be easier for me to just swap this pot out. So now the fun part will be trying to figure out how to get this thing off. Um, okay, looks like it's held on by this. So let's unscrew that first. Well, 
See, it's about 7, 7.30 in the morning right now. Oh, this would have been much easier to test. Cool. So what is this? 50 km. 500 km. Oh, okay. So the front part is 500 km. The other is 50 km. Interesting. Um, okay. So... Oh, interesting. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me try to turn on the little... Oh, I can't because I'm in... But yeah, the traces are pretty bad. I'm wondering if there's even continuity from this middle trace to this third position. Let's see if we're getting continuity. We are, okay. What about this? Two here. It's fine. So we're getting continuity up. Oh, sorry. I'm still new to this type of setup. So we are getting continuity for each of them. Just interesting. I guess it's okay. So 50k, 500, so yeah. Looks like something is off. Hmm. I'll double check one more time here. So I'll try to get it to where you guys can see the resistance. I could really find my. Let's see here. I'll just. I don't know if this will work, but let's try this so you guys can see the resistance, and I can, you know, easily be able to turn. Um, I don't know if this will work, though. We'll try. Okay, we're off to a good start, and we'll try this other one. So I'm just connecting these directly, like here, to my probe. Here we go. I'm just gonna turn that. Hard to latch this on, the middle one. Interesting, it kind of just stays there. Okay, let's try the bottom one. So this one seems fine, obviously. That's 500K, as you can see. So that looks right to so this other one. So that's the 500k one. And this other one should be 50k. But it's not. Let me try it one more time. It's just zero. 
Okay, so I'm going to get a new one of these uh, potentiometers. We'll go from there. Actually, I'm probably going to go to a store nearby. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this thing ready here. So when I get the new potentiometer, I can quickly add it to this bracket. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. So it says shaft on it. Cool. Right, we also have to get this thing off here. Um, and I have no idea where that Allen wrench is at the moment, so I'll find that later. So for now, I'll just go ahead and remove uh, this part. Actually, no, it doesn't look like it's gonna work that way. I'll have to remove this first. All right, found something so we can Get that off. Boom. And everything works like clockwork. Now we can take that off. There we go. Now we can desolder. The potentiometer from the circuit. Let's go ahead and prepare that. While that's heating up. Just get something to stabilize that. There we go. I'm gonna double check. Let's see, I'll just to show you guys what's on that side. I'm gonna double check now that it's off. Just see, so which was the one that was having some issues, this one back here. Let me get this set up again. And we'll test the resistance again. Every time I think of resistance, I seriously think of La Resistance from South Park. If you guys saw the movie, The Mole. Interesting. So this is the one that should be 50K if I recall. Because this one here, for example, is the 500K. Double check here. Yeah, see, 0.53 meg. Starts off okay. Rotates fine. So yeah, it's this, this whole part right here which is giving us the issue. Yeah, okay. 
So let's go ahead and get a new one of, the, of these and I'll be back. What is going on everyone? So a lot has happened since the last part of the video. I got my new potentiometer. Before that, I actually tried experimenting with the old potentiometer, taking off the 50K resistive track here and putting a new one in there and just trying to see uh, what type of resistance I can get, but it was not perfect or it was not satisfactory enough to want to utilize it in the actual pedal. So I would recommend this approach if you're skilled at being able to, for example, pry off the old resistive track here and place in a new one. Um, and just keep in mind, if you do go that route, that this is what the original looks like here. For example, you can see there are some grooves here, whereas like this one, for example, did not have those grooves and I had to try to use some pliers to make them or just customize them and it, it didn't work out the way I wanted to. So if, as for the new resistive track, as you can see here, I have the wires connected directly to it. And I'll tell you why I did that. When I was going to uh, place this back, I noticed that the basically the traces here did not look good. I think I mentioned that before. I tested the continuity and I wasn't getting it for like this one right here. So um, I decided to just, I just, yeah, I, I don't know how I feel about the traces there in general. Like I feel over time that it could potentially corrode. So I went ahead and just cut as you can see here. And that made it easier to figure out which goes where for wiring that back on. So alas, here we are. So I'm going to go ahead and put this together now and we can go ahead and test it out. Let's see what happens. So let's go ahead and get this back together. Oh yeah, just like that. So there will be a groove there. You can place that here, just like that. And if I recall next, so I don't know about where you guys are at, but I think I mentioned it before being in Japan here and weather is nice lately it's finally cool it's been super humid very difficult to do things like ride a motorcycle go for walks just anything now it finally is tolerable it's really nice it's about like 25 degrees celsius which is nice Okay, let's see here. What is the best way to do this? It's very difficult. Um, let me see here. So let's see, ideally, this would be like this. When it goes up, it is, it should be, I'm assuming, turning the potentiometer to the left. So we would want it right now to be at the right. So what we can do is, yeah, it's right here, I believe it was at, yeah, it's all the way to the right. So we would screw it in there. 
Yeah, that should take it down. Okay, so I think what I'll do is, it's all the way to the right already, so that should be your first step. What we're gonna do next here, let's get those two black screws in carefully. Right here. Okay, so again, we're all the way to the right. So we'll probably want to put it like this. Take our Allen wrench there, tighten it in this position. I'm gonna try to center it there. Um, about right. I don't know if you guys can see. Uh, it's not super centered, but it's okay. There we go. Cool. Okay, put this, snap this on here. Cool. So there's that. I'm going to go ahead and test now. Actually... Maybe I'll go ahead and just put those two, I think it's this one and like this one. Put these back. It looks like one of the screws is different size or something. Can't really tell. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, I'll just leave the switch like that for now and just you know, do this. So, go ahead and set this up. We have our output here, our input there. Turn those on. And I'm going to use the nine volt adapter here. There we go. So that's good. It doesn't cut off like before. Let's go ahead and hear what it sounds like. I apologize in advance if it's super loud. Try to turn it down here. hear that like that's a noise we would hear if the potentiometer for example was dirty um, you could sometimes also hear that noise in like old tube amps for example like I don't know but um, when I first started repairing those um, if I accidentally used a capacitor with the wrong voltage, like let's say it needed something that was like 16 volts and I gave it a 12 volt capacitor, then I would hear that noise as well. But I think in this case, it comes down to the potentiometer. I'm not sure if the one here is potentially just like a new old stock or I was under the impression that it was not used, but 
Let's go ahead and just clean it really fast. Both of them. I use the deoxit fader F5. Just like that. Once you spray it in, go back and forth there. That should be sufficient. And we will get these screws back on first and then to retest. Hope that noise goes away. That would not be fun. You know, you have this wah pedal making that noise. Okay, let's try now. actually just maybe just the wall effect and it just sounds like a dirty pot let me try with Let's see do I have See what I could do. I'm still kind of hearing it there as well. See if I change this effect. Does that help? Interesting, so, hmm. So I'm still hearing it. So for now, I guess, hmm. That's a tough one because we know it's not the potentiometer and it sounds like we're getting it for that setting and I can also hear it here. So I may need to look, this pedal is about, I guess it's around 20 years old now. I'm not necessarily sure but I might need to look at the electrolytic capacitors to do that. So I might do that. I'm not sure how long that could take. I'm going to use this ESR reader here, check those, and replace anything that might look questionable. And if I find something, I'll report back and let you guys know why it's making that noise. And we'll go from there. All right, guys. So I checked my electrolytic capacitors. Everything looks good. We're getting really good values. So uh, what I did was I tried to look at like the amplitude and um, like the frequency range to see if that had any effect. And it turns out that just eventually 
the noise went away after constantly doing this over and over. So I guess I just needed to, after spraying that deoxid F5, just as you guys can hear, turn up the amplitude a little bit more. See so how it's much better now. That seemed to be the main thing. It might be easier too. Um, I would recommend if it gets to the point where you guys need to use some type of um, spray on the potentiometer, then I would recommend not doing it this way, but I would literally recommend taking this, I might even do that right now. Um, I did get kind of lucky, but I would recommend, like let's say you're working on this pedal and that's all you wanna do. So I would recommend first, let's just go through that step really fast. We can take these two screws off. So then afterwards, just set the two screws aside. So I've already sprayed the deoxid, so I don't need to do it again, but if you're going to be doing that, there'll be those grooves here. Just spray in there. And then what I'm going to do now is just from left to right, because we don't get the full range with the pedal. So this will help just in case there was a little bit of excess dirt. So that should be good. And when you guys go to put this back on, remember that kind of, yeah, you want to get this all the way to the right first or just, you know, somewhere along this, this range here. Put that in. And then, oops. Actually one second, so yeah, about right there. And you get your screws back in. And I'll go ahead and double check just to see um, if there's any slight improvement or um, like it sounded okay, but a second ago, but just in case, I'll go ahead and test after this. Looks good, so I'll go ahead and test right now. And I'm also, yeah, I'll check this switch really fast too. So I'll turn the effect on about like 90%. I'll put input nine volt. Oh, I see, okay. So that's our LED, which will probably go right here. Yeah, I was wondering, like I saw the LED. Um, I'll have to look through my video again, but I don't remember seeing this turn on. Um, I'll have to check that here in a second. Yeah, so interesting. So it looks like the LED wasn't working. Um, so I need to replace that. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, look at that. That does not look good. Look how the trace is just coming up there. So I'm going to put that back. Hmm. Let me see really fast. I'm gonna pause this for a second and just check and see if I have an LED. Okay, I went ahead and found an LED. It's not the right size, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and test it out. Let's see if it works. And I did notice that in lifting this up that the trace is... Um, I can't tell if somebody put this on later. 
But yeah, it looks like something happened with the trace here. And yeah, so we need to figure out the uh, orientation of the LED, like which one is the positive lead and which one is the negative. So if you guys are gonna swap out an LED, just know that the positive is the longer, uh, generally the longer wire. So we can put our multimeter in the diode mode. And we should put the black lead on the negative. And, uh, oops, had it for a second there. So the red lead on the positive, we should be getting reading. Oh, it's touching. There we go, 1.572. So I'll just show you guys for the record, but if you did it the other way, you would not get that, you just get zero. So what we can do here is just go ahead and desolder this. Yeah, it looks like somebody added this. Interesting. To that, possibly because this part is um, not working or not connected properly. It also looks like they tried to put enough solder to where it would hit that. And also, um, where is it? Oh, right here. So I'll just go ahead and figure this out now. Let's see here if I were to, oh, actually, wait a second before I do that. I can figure that out right now. So we'll try to see which one is the positive lead. Okay, so that's not the case. So uh, looks like the positive may be the red. Oh, we're getting zero. So yeah, this is just a dead, a dead LED. So the pedal's on, so we can just try to figure out here which goes where. So that does not seem to be doing anything. Same here, and that could be because that wire there obviously comes back here and like should be like this, for example. So basically hitting the LED plus also this over here. So what we could probably do is just quickly make a bridge from here to here, and then try to use the LED. So let's see here, let me grab some wire really fast and I'll prepare that. Okay guys, so I prepared the bridge. Could add a little solder there to it. And I removed the solder a second ago here, added some new, so it's not the old solder that we had before. Here we go. And I have not removed the solder on this side. So I will do that now. Same here, we'll just add a little solder to this. There we go. Get ready to and be careful here. It looks like we could easily hit some other 
um, trace. Let me just add the new solder here. Add a little more to secure it. Here we go. Okay, so I need to be careful. Yeah, it's not gonna hit there. Looks like it should be okay. For now, at least I should say. Okay, so we'll go ahead and plug this in and now we need to figure out where this LED would go. Here we go. All right guys, so we got the LED. We're gonna go ahead and add that. Um, so this is a three millimeter. Just in case any of you out there need needs one for your Ibanez wall. Actually, yikes, I didn't keep track of the orientation. Just test really fast. Actually, Oh, it's already on. Okay, cool. I have no idea where my son. Oh, here it is. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get this wire kind of like this, just in case it wants to hit the bottom lid. Seems okay. Cool, so let's test it. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to finalize the pedal and then do a functionality test, probably using a guitar. So let me find the, here it is. This is the right way. Honestly, I can't remember. So, if you end up getting this pedal and this is backwards, please forgive me because I can't remember. It's probably in the beginning of the video. Oh, well, definitely. that
Okay, so before putting on the bottom lid, I'm going to just go ahead and see, wait, actually, looks like I forgot some screws here. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and test with this off because we're going to test with the battery and without. So we'll start without the battery first. Oh, for a second there, I thought it was just completely not working. So, okay, so it is on right now. It's on 10, let's go ahead and test. We'll go ahead and test with the amp too. It's probably really loud. So I remember, I'm not sure if I showed it in this video, but yeah, this is very sensitive, the switch. So keep that in mind. So some people might like that. Other times for some like the older 70s pedals, you have to like push up like this and it's really hard to engage the effect. So this is with the effect at zero. Five. And that's the final one. So this is on whatever, maybe treble, I'm not sure, for the effect switch, or the, uh, the switch here on the side. That's on bass. We'll go ahead and test the dry out as well. Right here. Seems fine. So that's good. So the next thing we're going to do is test with the guitar. Okay guys, the guitar is hooked up, so we're just gonna play around. Right now it's on effect at 10. Let's put the effect on five. And we'll put the effect on zero. So let's try without effect on. Try with without the bass. Seems okay. So I'm also going to test with the 
9 volt very quickly. Just to make sure that's okay. So you can know exactly how this pedal is functioning. It does seem like the switch is okay. Anyways, thank you so much for watching.